Hello, I'm Dr. Mark Daly and thanks for tuning in to our thyroid series. I am a doctor of chiropractic that helps people overcome chronic conditions like yours all naturally. I graduated from Life University in 1996, graduated from Functional Medicine University, have advanced education in functional endocrinology, functional blood chemistry, the brain and neurotransmitters, and mastering the thyroid as taught by Dr. Datis Karazian. So what can cause the symptoms of hypothyroidism? Well, when blood sugar is always too low or too high, hormonal imbalances, adrenal dysfunction, chronic inflammation, nutritional deficiencies, toxicity, liver congestion, poor, digesti poor digestion, poor digestive health, and the use of hormone creams or pills are all triggers for the functional thyroid imbalances. These are the things that we look for at the Wellness Center. Now, today we're going to talk about thyroid conditions and how you can have a normal thyroid test yet still suffer from all the symptoms of hypothyroidism. Now, up to this point, we've talked about how completely interwoven all of your body systems are, as well as each individual gland that makes up the endocrine system. Now, I really don't want to bore you with technicalities, but it's important that you understand a few things, so please, stick with me. This is how communication with the thyroid and the thyroid hormone works. It may sound complicated, but it's not. The hypothalamus sends thyroid-releasing hormone to the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland releases thyroid-stimulating hormone. That is the TSH that's most normally checked when assessing your thyroid function. The TSH, thyroid-stimulating hormone, goes to the thyroid gland and stimulates something called TPO activity to use iodine to create T4 and T3. These are the hormones made by the thyroid gland. And these are the hormones that in essence produce energy in the majority of functions of the thyroid gland. The important thing to understand is that of all the hormones made in the thyroid gland, T3 is the most active form. That's what produces the activity we associate with the thyroid gland. T4 is the less active form. The thyroid gland makes 93% T4. Wait a second, that's 93% of the inactive form. That's right. And 7% T3, which is the active form. Now, one very important thing to understand is that 60% of all T4 is converted to T3 in the liver. 20% goes to reverse T3, which is always inactive, but 20% is converted to T3S and T3AC, which are inactive, but they can be converted to the active form in a healthy gut. And I do mean healthy. Another thing that's important to realize is that in order for T4 to be converted to this T3, it has to be transported by a carrier protein. Now the reason I took the time to explain that process is because I want you to understand that you can have a healthy thyroid gland, but have a breakdown in the transportation, have a breakdown in conversion, or a problem with the hypothalamus, or the pituitary gland and still have all the symptoms of a hypoactive thyroid. So just looking at TSH is a mistake. These are the exact things that we look for at the Wellness Center and we do this through specific lab panels and we have tremendous success helping people overcome the symptoms of hypothyroidism. Now let's move into the six patterns of hypothyroidism. So these are things that, <clears throat> excuse me, that we commonly see that are associated with hypothyroidism. Today in this segment we're going to talk about the first two, but let me just review the six. You've got primary hypothyroidism, hypothyroidism which is secondary to pituitary hypofunction. Remember hypofunction is underfunction. Then number three you got thyroid underconversion, which I'll explain. You've got thyroid overconversion, 
and decreased TBG. Just remember TBG is the transport mechanism to get the thyroid hormone to the conversion site. Then you've got thyroid binding globulin elevation, which is the TBG, so it's too high. And then you have thyroid resistance. And what I'm going to do in simple uh, forms are break each of those down, just so you have a basic understanding. Obviously, we can't spend a whole lot of time on any one area, so we'll hit the highlights. Now, primary hypothyroidism is if the pituitary gland senses that the thyroid isn't doing its job, it pumps out extra TSH, giving the thyroid the incentive or the signal to work harder. Primary hypothyroidism really is a true dysfunction of the thyroid gland, and it is the only pattern in this pattern of hypothyroidism, these six different distinct patterns, that can be effectively managed with thyroid replacement hormones, unless it's an autoimmune condition, which we mentioned earlier, known as Hashimoto's. Then it's actually an immune issue and needs to be supported as such. Now, we don't, in our clinic, recommend the use of tyrosine and iodine from a nutritional perspective, which are seen in a lot of different thyroid products in the health food store. Thyroxine can suppress TPO activity, and iodine can exacerbate and potentially trigger an autoimmune thyroid disease. So we don't want to start that. Now, number two is hypothyroidism, secondary to pituitary hypofunction. Now, this is a very common, common pattern of uh, functional hypothyroidism. Chronic stressors are normally at the root of this pattern because they fatigue the pituitary gland, which is at the base of the brain. As a result, the pituitary fails to signal, signal the thyroid to release enough TSH to stimulate its activity. So the breakdown was not in the thyroid. The breakdown was in the pituitary. In other words, the thyroid gland may be uh, working perfectly fine, but nobody's telling it to go to work because the pituitary is not functioning properly. So pituitary hypofunction is usually the result of one of three different things, and perhaps they may overlap. The first and most common trigger is an active stress response, which is nearly universal in the United States. It can be a busy life, a poor diet, inadequate sleep, too much caffeine, a high carbohydrate diet, chronic inflammation and viral or bacterial infections really are just a few factors that can wear out the adrenal glands and depress thyroid function. Second is postpartum depression. It's not uncommon for women to dip into a low thyroid state after pregnancy because pregnancy amplifies the demand on all of your hormonal systems, which keep the pituitary busy around the clock. Also, many women enter pregnancy in some state of adrenal stress, and the increased demand of pregnancy overwhelms the pituitary gland. And then third is the inappropriate use of thyroid medications. These patients may feel better once they start taking the medication, whether it's Synthroid, Thyroxin, or whatever, for a little while. But because they're flooding their system, with unnecessary thyroid hormones, in some cases, their cells develop resistance to it. The cells basically shut the door so that no more can get in. Also, uh, an overabundance of thyroid hormones circulating in the bloodstream cause the pituitary to get the message that it's no longer needed and eventually it stops communicating with the thyroid gland. And sometimes this scenario, or sometimes in this scenario, the pituitary thyroid loop, where there's a feedback loop where they communicate to one another, is lost forever. And the dependence on medication will be lifelong. Now, let me say this before I conclude this segment. If you are suffering from a chronic condition, whether it's a thyroid function or whether it's gastrointestinal, some other chronic condition, I am offering a complimentary 
consultation in my office, which normally costs $275. We do have a waiting list, and I only accept a limited amount of new patients. So if you're interested in that, call the office right away. And I do hope that this video series is adding some value to your life, giving you a little bit more information so that you understand better why you feel the way you do. And ultimately, I believe in order for you to reach your destiny and fulfill your purpose, you need to be healthy. So thanks for taking time to watch the video series. God bless you and have a great day.